Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the eighteen seventy eight FM podcast. Uh, we are bushless again this bushless. week. It's like it's like he's developed this back injury, and he's mm. we're having to manage him through yeah. through the situation. Very much like Dominic Calvert. The irony is, is that he's on Maisie's side, or he has been on yeah, Maisie's that side. Is the irony. And I've seen we've seen him less while he's been, while on, he's Maisie's been on Maisie's side. side then then we would if he was in what whatever corner of the earth he lives in. I don't know. What's you know, he lives in Essex, actually. Oh, he, lives in, he, he lives near South End in a place called Leon Sea, which is oh. interesting, actually, because he lives there and he's on Absolute Radio and so is Sarah Champion, who's also on Absolute Radio and she lives with Pete Donaldson, who used to be on Absolute Radio. And so we've dubbed it Absolutely See, because it's like Lee, as oh, in L E I G H. Absolutely. See what he did there. Do you know what it's like? It's like, you ever seen that film, Copland? No. Where all the cops live in one little town in New Jersey it. and they control it and they control the flow That's of whatever what goes on. That's what it, Do you reckon, like, they all walk around and if someone's playing a song that doesn't, that goes against the playlist, <laughs> they just, they it tut, goes, they tut yeah, and that's walk it. away very just slowly. Away. Or yeah. every song has to be a certain length, and in one area of the place, it might be an 80s song, but in another area of the place, it might be but, a 90s but song. Gotta be the but they have to be length. the same length. Same one length, one so it all fits. It has to playlist. have that certain musical credibility, doesn't it? Oh, because yeah. they don't play stuff that's rubbish. Mm. Mm. And and oh, and no, ladies it. who work on the sh- on on the radio station oh. have to have a certain like uh, voice, quite deep and Do quite you? like bassy, yeah. yeah and yeah. oh yeah, all oh, quite They know that you know they hung around watching really bad bands just to see if they're good. Do you know what I mean? In 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 smoky filled uh, basements, uh, gigs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you can you just tell. You can to, just tell. And to get that gravelly, just to get that gravelly like, voice. To eat the gravel like yeah, just Dyche. that gravelly Obviously, voice. Going, just, yes, yeah. we were watching the Electric Boogie Monkeys last night. <laughs> Phenomenal band. They're I gonna believe be big. They're, they're they'll be big get, in the next 80. No months. one will know who they are, but they're going to get lots of Ivan Novello awards. That's the go. kind. Maybe that's, that's where that's what the bush, the bush must master. Maybe general. that's what he's been. Maybe you maybe you're on Maisie's side scouting. Maybe the next, the next bands. He didn't come in and, no. and go sleep on a couch like our other member who's on the. Uh, who's not in well, the well, well, to be fair, Dave, we are we are due a visit from you at some we point. Are due a visit it's been a while, hasn't yeah. it? In fact, it must be. It's got to be at least three years. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're getting a new couch next week. So. Yeah. Well, so. they, well, well, it's, well, can I come and open it? That... <laughs> come, I mean, come, and have a, know, come and have a sleep on it. What you could do is you could put like some special ribbons on mm. it, and then I could turn up as if I'm a member of the royal family or a visiting dignitary Everton with a pair royalty. of scissors, and I could I could open it. For Everton you. royalty. Whenever you want to do that, Dave, yeah. we yeah. will get the ribbon. Um, incidentally, the talking. Out. Talking of Bush, is this, you know, and I'm not trying to be a grass or anything, but is this two episodes that he's now missed it out two, of yeah. eight or something? He's missed yeah. two out the last three. It's yeah. not good, is it? it it's, we're going to have to monitor the situation and mm-hmm. send them to a specialist. I was going to say, we're very, gonna have to. he very much is the Dominic Carmel. It is. If it's, persistent, <laughs> if it's persistent, we're going to have to look at a way to solve it. You know what I mean? That's just. Or is he it. more? I think he's actually he's probably more like the Hamas Rodriguez because he basically tells us when he doesn't when he's not doing it. Correct. Yeah, you know what I mean. True, yeah, and and we're sitting here going, well, we have to let him off because Do you know, he, he brings a certain level of yeah. gravitas to the. Well, we're going we're gonna to have to at some stage though. We're going to have to say, listen, this is either working or it's not working. Well, so he's got to prepare himself for that moment. We're not I think you're right. Moment. I mean, it's it's right. about it's about commitment and it's about team spirit. The only way pulling any, together. The only way anything um, works, and that's a yeah. seamless link into Saturday. Well, there you go. You it see, was obviously a about commitment, about teamwork, yeah. and Dave, first and foremost, a tremendous three 0 victory for Everton. What a difference a few few days make, because obviously <laughs> yeah. we're talking um, at the time that we're talking, we haven't discussed the the Newcastle game. No, no, let's and leave. I'm trying to skate over that. No, 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 but absolutely. You can mention and, it in passing now. Well, listen, but I'm I'm using this in a positive way. The reason I mention Newcastle is to is to highlight how quickly things can change mm. and 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 how they did change because everything that was wrong about Newcastle, mm. and in fact some of the recent performances was rectified. I thought in terms of the way that they played on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And when you think about it, there wasn't a huge amount that was, it was, it was just that cutting edge. It was that final third play, which was mm-hmm. so lacking before, you know, and the fact that, you know, the, the lack of, of, of any attempts on target previously. Mm-hmm. And then this was a whole different ball game. There was intensity, there was pace, 
there was that cutting edge, there was good movement off the ball. I agree with you, Baz, in terms of the fact that having Dominic back, in addition to his goal, which I took, thought he took brilliantly, mm. I thought that the team played differently, as yeah. I think you pointed out on yeah. one of your vids the other day. Um, and it just felt like there was a better shape and a better direction. And his centre forward play about receiving it back mm. to back to goal and then laying it off again and then moving just made it so much better. But it was, as I say, just such a marked contrast between the two. Whereas after Newcastle, I started to get a little bit worried for Lampard, okay. and I don't want to sound alarmist and sort mm. of ringing ringing the bell too early. But in light of the way that we live in modern football, yeah. and and obviously with with Gerrard etc., and people will always make the comparisons between those two. And I kind of thought, is this going to start getting a bit lumpy for him? Mm. And then, you know, you saw his frustrations in the post match after Newcastle, and then you look at the post match after Saturday, mm. and that in many ways sort of sums up how difficult it must be to be a modern day yeah. manager because at the end of the day you know you haven't you, you you've sent them out with essentially the same kind of instructions and the same kind of preparation and just tweaking it and getting that bit more out of them was a completely different complexion hmm. i think he did i mean he did we talked about this in the final way yesterday it was a positional change for alex yeah, yeah. which was key to a lot of yeah. it wasn't it yeah, and then yeah. obviously as you were saying yesterday, Michalenko put yeah. on made a big difference, didn't he? <laughs> Just going back to what Dave was saying there about Lampard and his um uh, and you know the way he looks sometimes. There is there is a reason why we've uh, we signed up with a Turkish hair um treatment <laughs> specialist, isn't there? If he carries on, he's gonna look like he's, Albert Kendall. He, and... he's doing, I mean he's doing he's doing well. He's getting the he's getting the um the modern day comb over going there, isn't good. it? Get a look. get a get a bushy. He still looks good with it, doesn't Yeah, it, but get a bushy at the front and then you know, mm. I think we've seen similar from Beckham, but that's magically gone away. Mm. Um No, it must be difficult because you, you you know, but what I do like though is with I I I've noticed this with, with Frank Lampard. He, you can tell in some of the press conferences that he's absolutely fuming with mm. the team, mm. yeah. but he does it really well of like not mm. letting it, not letting it seep through and, mm. and actually come out come out with those things. Not that I don't think I don't think anyone minds that as such because we saw that last year at Palace when we got beaten four 0 in the cup and everyone agreed. I think there are times and a place when you do it, and obviously you've got to keep the spirits of everyone going. But I think um, you know I think I think the difference again is. Uh, with what Dave was saying there is that people people do like Frank Lampard, Evertonians like him. He's got a great base of support, and 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 that will keep him in the job through those tough times when you might lose three in a row. And he does explain it really well, and I think he's he's explained it well in ter- in terms of the three teams we got beat by are better teams than us, and those things will happen. But mm. you've got to keep doing what you're trying to do and get better with it. And I think on Saturday we've seen a massive example of that. Just little tweaks that we saw, and him, and and I I liked them in the press conference where he came out and he said uh, afterwards saying that um, Mikhailenko being on his side was great in the first half because he could talk to him and get him get him higher and mm. keep keep moving him up and I think that was a massive difference I think that was the, the big difference Mikhailenko played 10 yards further forward and everyone then just seemed to play on the front foot mm. and I know that was already um, sort of instilled from the beginning because we are playing at Goodison and you always have to have that anyway but I think um, that was really important and as as Dave mentioned there Dominic Harvin Loon being a real focal point for us I think the first goal illustrated that mm. he wins the ball back because he's used his pace and his power, and I don't think Neil Mopai could necessarily do that because mm. he's not that kind of player. Gives it to Awobi, but then gets back into the space, yeah. mm. receives it brilliantly, and it's a, it's a good finish as well. Hits the target, and that's all we've been asking for. Yeah, definitely, and uh, Awobi obviously was uh, was instrumental again. But it, it is that the intensity that was there, and uh, you know, I think the crossing they were throwing a few crosses in early on, and that always gets goodish and going as well, and. You both respond then, don't you? The crowd responds to it, and that gives the players energy. It's just the players, but it is everything a case was of, earlier. Everything, yeah. everything. You know, there seemed to be much less dithering, for want mm. of a better word, yeah. in the final third. Whereby, when you look at that, you know, the reason that goal of Dominic's was so good, he got it, he hit it, he hit it straight away, early mm. doors. He didn't tit around with it, you yeah. know, and actually, you know give somebody the chance to come in and take it off him. Mm. The, the the best one of the lot, which was the 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 effort from Anthony Gordon with his left foot, you know, which the, the keeper tipped over. Again, get it, get a good shot away quickly. Yeah. It's almost like they've been told to really cut out some of that last minute 
you know, arsing pauses. <laughs> yeah, exactly, arsing about. And it, and it it really paid off, and it was just that speed of decision-making, I thought, that, that made a huge difference. I think as well, just saying there, is, uh, Palace, obviously, were missing uh, Czech Decore, and mm. I think, you know, he's obviously a big player for, for yeah. them. And it, that's another thing, isn't it? It's like if you've got, if they've got a really important player missing, don't let them settle into the game. Mm. Don't let it get them, because... Because we've, I mean, you go back to like Spurs last week, and like for the first twenty minutes, how much, how much under the cosh we were, and we got through that. And I think we've said that a couple of times this mm-hmm. season. Get through the first twenty minutes; these will throw everything at you, and then settle into the game. And I think that op- that happens in a lot of Premier League games. Yeah, yeah. Where if you get through that instant, you know, there's a lot of adrenaline flowing at the beginning of the game. Team, has, you know, got the manager's words ringing in their ears. Get at these. Get an early goal. First goal's a big thing. I think that was the same for us. It was like, mm. don't let these settle. Don't let these get comfortable at like Goodison. Because once that, if you get past that first 20 minutes and you haven't got that goal, then everything just seems to be a little bit harder for Everton mm, when yeah. we're at home. And then, that, I mean, we, the crowd can't, not necessarily get frustrated, and it does less so with, with since Frank Lampard's been in charge. Mm. But there is that thing of certainly, you know, I'm in the Gladys season, we're all standing up. And after 20 minutes, if you haven't done anything, you're desperate to sit down, but you know you, you, know you can't. So there's that thing of like, you know, you keep the energy going, and mm. if that flows through the crowd. So I think it was really important we got the early goal. And once we got it, and, you know, they had to start chasing the game, it, it was perfect because they, they, couldn't, they couldn't really find a way through us. No, we did, and we did also witness one of the worst referee, one of the most inept oh, was, refereeing performances. It was horrendous. It, was uh, it was terrible, wasn't it? Oh, it was, it was. I don't know, Dave. I don't know if you got to see like the the full spectrum of how bad this guy was, but he was he was he was truly truly out of his depth. Yeah, <laughs> it was just some of the things they did were just mad. I mean, Dominic Calvert got clotheslined. I mean, it was like he bounced off the top rope, came back, and. <laughs> Like there was a big <laughs> stiff arm ready Holy. to take him out. Honest to God, the Undertaker would have been proud of that yeah. one. It was nuts. He was gone. And he didn't oh, even get a booking for no, him. No, he didn't even get a booking. But he was, he was, he was awful. Both sides though as well. I mean, he, he gave them. He, he let us get away with a couple of ones that were blatant fouls and mm. didn't get. He was just, he was really, really yeah, bad, yeah. wasn't he? He yeah. was like really bad. Um, but in spite of all that, we saw mm. three really good goals, Dave. I mean, you just mentioned the Dominic Calvert Lewin one. You know, as Ped said, wins it back. Onana plays a, a quick early ball mm. to a Wobi. A Wobi gives it to Dom, and it's that great first touch and finish. And then the second goal where 10 Everton players mm. touch it, I think is only Garner yeah. who doesn't touch the ball. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. move, fantastic. And then you launch and putting a flag up, a rogue flag, when Anthony <laughs> Gordon was... Miles Clearly on side. Onside. I know. You I know, know, and then you see the third goal. But three, three really good goals. They were, they were, they were, they were all, they were all really, really well crafted. Mm. And and I think the other thing as well is that, um, in addition to to taking those those chances early, but also the other thing is that how many times have we been one one nil up against a yeah. side, and we've all felt we've had the chances and we've not taken them, and then we go on to regret it you know when they they equalize or sometimes go and beat us 2-1 or something like that mm. and actually this was just a great you know example of taking your chances taking them early getting those points on the board and they were fully deserving of their 3-0 win yeah, yeah. i mean completely yeah i think um, it could have been five or six if we'd got yeah. earlier goals in the first half and also incidentally that's not to say that that palace had a shocker i mean they weren't at their best Granted, mm. and Vieira said that in the post match, but it wasn't like they were awful either. Mm. And I think that the scoreline and the result is far more to do with how well Everton played and how well Everton converted their their chances, mm. as opposed to how poor Palace were, which yeah. is sometimes what we what we said before. Yeah, I don't think they were. I'll be honest, for the home games this season, I don't think anyone's been been particularly good. I don't think anyone's blown us away. You no, know, the defeats, Man United and Chelsea. I don't think. You know, we should have got something. We should have got something out of them. And the fo- when you go back to the Forest, forest game, you know, we should have had energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. If we'd had energy like we had on Saturday, oh, forest, five, we would have yeah. destroyed them. We'd have ran so by it, yeah, it doesn't. And uh, you know, there's been lots of times when the, the opposition have come, and the frustration is that you're not putting two or three past them when they yeah. are when you've got that much control over a game of football. Mm. So, what did you make, Dave, of of the, of the second goal? Because again, you will have been watching it on, on TV. You know. What what did you make of like the Lansman's flag going up? Because obviously where I am the ground, I I yeah. have to trust that moment yeah, yeah, yeah. because I obviously Baz has a slightly different view from me. But, but, but what was it like watching it for you? 
I watched it live, and as soon as as soon as the flag went up, you just saw he was never off, mm. you know. And yeah. then you do start to doubt yourself a little yeah. bit because obviously you think, well, hang on, are they in a position that that I can't see? And then obviously they they rolled it back again, and they were going to go, no, he's clearly on side. It just I mean, it, I mean, when you when you when you think that how many really really close decisions have gone either way, mm. you know, of late, and literally people's bloody elbows being offside or their knees being offside or whatever, their chin. Whereas with this, he was so clearly on, yeah. and and I think it was em- embarrassing mm. for the the Lino with that one. But um, but yeah, it was just it was just nice to see it, you know. And, and and once you once you clearly saw from the freeze frame how on he was, and it was just nice to be sitting there awaiting that VAR decision, knowing that it could be <laughs> nothing other than positive. <laughs> you had one over on all of us because yeah. we were in the Gladys and it was just like people just like. Oh, hang on! This is taking a little bit more time, mm. and this is taking a little bit more time. And then I think, I think we, I think somebody just seen either Frank Lampard or someone going, "It's, it's given this." Mm. I, th- I don't actually remember us getting that happening before, being given one. I know we've no. been, we've had them disallowed for a goal. No, we've had them disallowed. No, like Richarlison against Arsenal, a couple mm. last season, and um, you know various moments where you're waiting. I remember Deli Ali's mm. handball for Spurs. How long we waited for that win in that one-one uh, that time? But I don't remember being given one. Um, that 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 and and you know waiting waiting for it because the last one was obviously Connor Cody's in the derby, which which went against yeah, us, which so. went against us, and we waited ages for that one. Mm. But it was. Um, yeah, we had like the the one the other Rashford one the other week that went for us, but it wasn't mm. our goal, was it? It yeah. was a, it was just a decision. But yeah, I mean, where I sit, I was on the I'm on the halfway line, so I could see. Uh, you naturally look when a player receives it, where mm. who's around them, and, and when Michalenko got it, I could see there was nobody anywhere near him. So mm. when he hit it and Gordon ran in, we're all saying from our view he's well on side because he was he was nowhere near it. But then it's it's rolling on, isn't it? It's the taking time. And then I looked over at Lampard and I seen Lampard do the old, you know, <laughs> it's a goal. Mm. He was like thumbs up and all that. Mm. So I, I was saying, to him, it's a goal, it's a goal. They're going to get it. And then obviously the next minute it's announced, which is great. But like Ped said, it ruins that moment. You know, there yeah, was no reason for the linesman to put his flag up yeah. because the goals are checked anyway. So mm. if Andy what? Gordon yeah. would have scored, they'd have gone and gone a sec. Checked mm. it, and if he would have been offside, VAR would have given it offside. Mm. But we would have mm. never, we'd have never, if he'd never put, if put his flag up, we'd mm. have never known about that. The goal would have the been fact given. that it stood, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, no, yeah. we would have never known there was yeah. even a question mark about it. No. the only thing I thought when I watched it again was, I think Gordon was like, he got wandered into an offside position early, didn't mm. early. then he came back, though, yeah, yeah. He? And I'm just yeah. thinking, but I just think, is that where we the are now? The ball, are we it? looking for these moments now mm. that a player has nothing to do with, the, mm. with an offside? I I just can't wait for this new system to come in. I really yeah, can't. Yeah, the yeah. system they're using in the Champions League at the moment because it's just that stuff is what is it? It's t- it's turning people off football. Mm. You know, people mm. are getting so annoyed about about lots of things in football at the moment. That that these little moments are just uh, and you know they're turning it off and, and I don't know you know a lot of people mightn't have seen the Champions League stu- uh, offside stuff yet but we'll get it's going to be used in the World Cup mm. so we're going to see it loads in the World Cup yeah. and I, I hope there's a real clamour for it and then we'll get it in of course but mm. we, it should be coming in this season. The irony being though that when you think about VAR and the whole rationale behind it, it was all to do with you know, eliminating human error. Yeah. All of these frustrations that we see are all entirely down to human error yeah, yeah. in terms of the interpretation of the technology or yeah. the application of the mm. technology. And whether you can draw a straight line. Yeah. yeah. Because it, it does. So I think someone pointed this out a few weeks ago and it did, it did you know, I can't remember what it was, but it was like, there's a guy drawing a line on the pitch. It's like, this isn't a supercomputer, is it? This is no. a guy drawing a, and, mm-hmm. and relying on when the ball left the guy's foot yeah. and, and and basically just making it up. And as they just said, there, it's coming down. It's still human error. Mm-hmm. It's just that there's an, you can, there's an application that you can use now. And the minute it's taken off humans, like goal line technology is. Yeah. And I think we saw that with um, the Manchester United goal against Chelsea that the weekend it. as well. You know, it was, it was, it was like, I watched that and I thought, that's not over the line. But when you see the technology, and again, I know you'll get 
conspiracy theories going, oh, you can you can make that up. But that that shows you the ref just goes, it's a goal, that. It's and a that's goal, it. And, and no one it. argues. Yeah. You know, yeah. no, no I went over the line. Yeah. And, and you don't it. have to rely on a human. And that's stickers. what we, yeah, that's what we want with the yeah, offsides, yeah. don't we? But there was a few, uh, there was a few in the game, a few dog challenges. But that's yeah. going to take me into the middle bit because you were talking. About <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I was looking for a link. I was looking for a link. We are not starting this middle section in some kind of reference to my dog <laughs> this made, this was this comes out of a story about your son yeah so let's all right. not all right. It's, Look, let's, all right it's hard to you know, i just want it? to get your now you the dog in okay. but forget That's about it yeah, yeah, cause i thought they sent i actually thought they sent about and, yeah, a bigger dog Anderson. oh yeah poor anderson he was pathetic um yeah so it's half time yeah right yeah. so you know you do what you do don't you in jack's going to his mates and said they'll drop him off on the way should have been a straightforward mm. journey turned into anything but a straightforward journey yeah. Roadworks. What annoys me about roadworks is they start six miles back. Oh, yeah. Fellas are just chatting. Mm. I don't actually mm. see people doing the stuff. Yeah. I know they obviously do at some stage. Yeah. Anyway, got through all that, and the kid lives in like a, a country lane, mm. like at the back of you know back in the Liverpool, and um, the house is just like one of these houses that it's part of, like two yeah. two in the middle of nowhere. So there's no like. So I'm driving up these country lanes facing temporary lights and the journey's just going, yeah. getting longer and longer. And when you think, you're at, this will take me 10 minutes there and then I'm into the, I'm yeah. into the studio to do that. So, I have to point out, by the way, and the thing that made me laugh in this, go is on. We've, we've got a WhatsApp group, uh, the four of us, <laughs> obviously, for planning this. And so at 11.59, mm. we, record, we record this at midday, right? Yeah. I, mean, I know that's of no relevance because you watch this whenever. But anyway, a minute before we were supposed to start recording, sent a i sent a, a whatsapp because bush had already said it can't be there right for spurious reasons that we'll pick him up on next time oh yeah and and then so i sort of said lads are we still doing the three of us <laughs> and bearing in mind regular viewers and listeners to this podcast will know that early mornings or indeed mornings as a whole are not head speciality well, afternoons. and he comes back and he kind of goes yes we are I'm just waiting on Baz. <laughs> which is, which... And like, you could just tell the pride in his voice he was, because yeah. for once he was there early. He's running he out was... of the studio like this with his chest out. Where are you? Where are on... you? Yeah, exactly. You give me exactly. the full Delia Smith. I never said anything. I no, he know. didn't say anything. It was the smugness. Mm. I'm not normally like, like that, you see. But anyway, yeah. But, so yeah, we got, I got on there anyway and yeah. made me way in and I relayed the mm. story to yeah. which... Uh, but, you come back with why well, l- l- it's easier for you with your dog. Yeah, it's easier to have a dog, but I'll come into that story. Yeah, I've just on. got a couple of little things a I want to say. Of, for, go on, go on. Of, yeah. Number one, yeah. we've been telling you for ages, me and Ned, as yeah. like almost like a counselling session to get a car, new car, which would have an inbuilt sat-nav in it, which would basically show you where the trap... No, 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 you can't have your phone. No, no. No, you sh- you're right. You're no, right. you should... With an inbuilt sat-nav in, yeah. so where you would know where the road works were. So that's on yeah. you for not buying a new car. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, that's on you. That's, that's your I'm mistake. I'm not going to... I've got nothing and to before, say. I just want to tell my very quick story of when I was on the cabs. Oh, okay. Because yeah. you mentioned country roads, yeah, right? Yeah. Take me home. Yeah. And um, mm, so... To the place. So, um, <laughs> Where belong. So around Liverpool, like, there are, like, these country roads with, yeah, like... Yeah weird like little farms and like there's horses and stuff mm. and when i was on the cabs there was the, i got a call one night to one by saint ellen's and uh there was this really dark road and i've, I've got this call for this house and I've, I've i'm going up and down it a couple of times and i'm not seeing anybody and i'm like i oh, can't i'm gonna i'm gonna cancel this mm. and and literally i got a call from the radio the base going the, the guy the down on the left you've just got to go in a little bit because it's like it's set back from the road and it's a pitch black road no lights no nothing mm. um it's like one of those roads that you see going across a motorway in the middle yeah, of nowhere yeah, 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 yeah. and um so, so i go back i'm driving down and dave honestly this is every word i say is the truth and as i turn around and come back I see a ghostly figure in the road ahead of me. Nice. And I'm driving down slowly. And as I got closer and, I lo- and the lights came onto the fella, it was a, pi- a man wearing a dress, dressed as a clown. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just, just analyze this. A man wearing a dress, dressed <laughs> as, as a clown. As a clown, yeah. A, a clown face, clown but, with face a dress on. but with a dress on. And was was this was this October the thirty first? Was it was around Halloween? Halloween it was it was not. It was not. But the, I, I will get to, and that's why was I was it real. Was he a real man? 
He was a real man, like yeah. Like, wasn't a ghost. No, it wasn't basically. a ghost. Like, but that's hang why. On, hang, on, sorry, well, hang on, hang on. I mean, there's different ways you can interpret that. I mean, you know, did you lift his dress up and check? No, what you <laughs> so, mean is that actually was he a was he a figure, was not he was he a real physical? Man? So, was so it I, physical I honestly, being... I seen in front of me. So <laughs> I pulled over as you do, as I do, and I. And, Were and you scared at this point? I was absolutely terrified, the right? And the door opened, and. A- apologies if I offend anyone with what I'm with with the accents I'm going to put on now, but this mm. is what happened. And the fe- he opened the door, and the fella just went in his best like RuPaul contestant oh, okay, went, yeah. "Are you mate?" <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. He went. We've been waiting for you for ages. <laughs> And he got in the back, and I'm like, "All right, mate, you're all right." And then the next minute, another fella in a dress went jumped in the back, and he was like, "You're all right, mate." When I went, "Where are you going?" He went, "So oh, me, me and Air are going to St. Helens," and I was just like, "Oh my!" Fair and life. apparently, they were doing a they were doing a door in St. Helens. Yeah. Like you know, they were doing they were doing a drag for drag, yeah. and they, they, that was the costumes. And one of them, had, the other fella had a dress on with blonde hair, and the yeah. other one was a clown. But I've never been so scared in my me. life. That and they were they were the soundest fellas or mm. whatever they want yeah, to be yeah. called uh, ever. And <laughs> some of the conversations they were having were unbelievable. Un- like 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 I could never ever repeat the things they were talking about in the back. They were like they they were primed for a Channel Four special documentary. Oh, okay. The stuff they were saying Fairly to each enough. other. Honestly, it's on it. That's it, all you it, need it to just, say. It was phenomenal. But it's just the moment my beams hit that clown. Mm, in a, that was it. In a, again, that could be a Channel Four yeah. documentary. Um, yeah. Was just one of the scariest moments I'm of my say, life. And that it sounds it. Pit, so, so you, got off, are, you got off lucky. I got off light because it was yeah. it was light. It was. And it he was. was and his mate was at the gate waiting for him just in the random house. So there you that go. That does not. I don't even think that story does justice to how dark, St- scary, and, and yeah, the and, fact you were driving down those lanes and we've all pitched and driven down those lanes at some stage, yeah. and the next minute you see a, that figure in the middle of a road, not me. I, I used to live on one of those little dark, scary lanes oh, years ago. God. And and this was in the days when I was getting up and doing the radio show. And I had this terrifying... It's it's funny about when you're on your own and it's quiet and it's dark mm. and your mind plays yeah. tricks on you. And, Ped, you yeah. will totally yeah. testify for this yeah. in terms of, you know, you can remember exactly how you felt yeah. in that car, on that lane, thinking any minute now is something going to jump out of me. Yeah. I remember years ago when I was, I was getting up and used to live in this little cottage and it was one where, where the, the door goes straight into the lounge, right? Yeah. So there's no hallway, no nothing. And I'm sat there and I'm putting my shoes on and it's about half four, quarter to five in the morning. I'm about to set off for work. And I can hear this, like something sort of rubbing it up against the front door. And I'm thinking, it's really strange. What's that? Maybe it's my imagination. And then I can hear something again rubbing up and the front door it sounds like it's going towards a joke and it's not i promise you mm-hmm. and so i look out the spy hole and i can't see anything i said think that's strange and then must be nothing anyway rob ever gets from the front door i then go to open the door but i put the chain on and as i open the door this massive great mouth is like an, Alsa- it's an alsatian right which is through the bit of the chain just kind of like i'm like that sort of up my waist height right and i'm thinking jesus christ and sl- shut the door so I kind of think, what am I going to do? <laughs> because my car was actually parked in our next door neighbors because they were on way on holiday and I was trying to make it look like they were there. Right. Yeah. So it's not far, but it's literally next door. So I think, well, how am I going to get out of this situation? Because I've got to get past that massive great dog <laughs> in the dark. And I'm not not the I'm not the best with dogs, right? right. Especially massive great Alsatians. Yeah. So in the end. I kind of decided, I, I sort of waited until it sort of wandered off a little bit. And I thought, right, now's my chance. So I went out and we just got our floors done. So I had some old bits of wood in flooring. So I, I took one of those under my arm in case this thing attacked me, right? That I could either defend myself or I could put it in its mouth in the same way that you would stop a crocodile's mouth from closing, <laughs> right? And then I also <laughs> took a packet of ham out of the fridge as well Love because it. I thought, you know, if I need to, I can then feed obviously... It. Yeah, I can feed it, right? So I can throw the ham, and then I can go with my, my piece of wooden floor, you know, Leg and it. then sort of get into the car. And I managed to get past this thing. And I kid you not, I went and I put my stuff in the back of the back of the car. And as I looked through the back of the car, I could see the Alsatian with its on the bonnet, right? With its <laughs> like that. 
But I quickly jumped in, shut the thing, and then off I drove. And I've never been so scared in my life as that. And, and literally, what happened was, it turns out there was actually it was actually quite a sad story because somebody had actually abandoned this dog oh. and had driven it up in the middle of the night up this sort of quiet little lane and basically just sort of tipped it out of a van and just left it there to fend for itself. So oh. the reason why it was sort of it was crouching in in the oh, doorway man. was because it was obviously cold and it was hungry and was just wanting to come in. And as opposed to I was fear, fearful that it wanted to eat me, but yeah. it didn't. It just wanted some warmth and some love. And in the end, it went to a good home. Oh. So it's a nice story in the end. You nice see? story. You, you built it up like the hand of a basketballs. Yeah. But well, he, that's. Play. But tell you what, though, at that time in the morning yeah. when it's dark, yeah. That's Absolutely. how it felt, yeah. you know, and, and I, st I still stand by my wooden floor and ham, you know, protection. <laughs> that, that's the number one protection. It got on. To be fair, you were resourceful. You got on. You thought about the potential dangers and thought, right, mm. what can I do? And, and you didn't just go route one with yeah. the wooden thing. I'll just hit it over the head. Cause, I, mean, no, I wasn't hey, going to do that. No, 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 no. This was, this was going to be saying that, but if it attacked you, you'd have... Oh, yeah. If it had if it gone for me, then I would have thought twice. I mean, the easiest thing would have been to just ring in and, and not do the of show. Of course, yeah. And just stay there. And what just would wait your to... excuse have been? <laughs> well, because I, I can't get out of the house because there's a massive <laughs> man-eating... There's a wolf outside my front door and I can't get in. Oh, I think that's God, perfectly that. legitimate. I mean, that's that's a better excuse than a train strike or road That work, is a Baz. good one. That is a good or excuse. dropping your son off. Isn't it? Mm. No, no. At an imaginary friend's house. No, it's L35 <laughs> gone out of here or something, I can tell you. The, uh, it was good, though, because you took both, you know, you went positive with the ham mm. and negative yeah. with the wood. So I've, just got vision. I've got what, vision you know. to your son walking around door to door, knocking, asking for ham. No, the kid was there. <laughs> Asking for ham. Yeah, could you abandon them? No, he's there. He was there, then leave him. Okay. And just leave him. Okay, but next time you do leave him somewhere remote, make sure make that he's sure got he's some got ham wood. in and, his rucks. And wood. And wood. And just in case. Off the he'll be shorter in case the mm. hand of the basketball's turn up. Uh, there you go. So, yeah, so the moral of the story is, mm. what, have a dog? You can ask me your original stuff, whatever you were originally going to ask well, me. Well, it's all right. We'll be We've got clowns in the road. RuPaul I, and we've had I can't remember I can't remember what the original part of that was Was or did it start from from IU <laughs> it comes from Jordan IU yeah and it's, wasn't it was... hang on weren't you going to ask me about take, me taking my dog to dog school yeah go on sorry yeah, that oh, was yeah. it so, so just before we started I'm relaying this story yeah. and Ped's giving it you know dogs this is why dogs dogs don't ask to be don't to be do. taken and dropped off as a mate and dave and, come and, back and with, dogs dogs aren't more of a mither during half term they're consistent dogs don't mm. go you know don't have half term as such to which mm. you said yeah. my dog did go to school did go to so, yeah, so go yeah, yeah my dog, dog went your dog goes to see father christmas and it goes to he, school he goes to, he does go to see father well santa paul santa paul i mean let's get it right fair play you know what i mean fair play don't be mixing your culture in with mine don't be uh, don't be santa bringing Paws. don't be bringing your santa, religion into santa paul well, good that's a that's a very it's a great name that's a, that's lots and lots of people take their dogs oh that's to see fine santa i'm i'm building the pit it also um, has a dressing gown mm -hmm. It all, yeah, that's a dress and gown. Where, so where does where does Santa Paws live? And don't say St Helens. Well, I mean, it used to be where, where... It used to be the RSPCA by Everton's training ground, but he knocked it down and built a load of houses. And there you go. That's modern. But isn't it on? The, isn't it press? Isn't it on the way to? Oh, well, there's loads the of different ones. They do them, and loads of different places oh, do it now because loads of people. Dogs surely, want. sure, but surely, surely, Ped, and and you know, be careful what you say mm. here because I don't want to ruin it for yeah. some of our younger yeah. um, listeners and viewers. And dogs, but surely, sh and dogs, surely, and puppies. Surely, there's only one Santa Paws. So how could there be help multiple? Us. Well, help no, us, no, no, because, because all because help us. They've got four legs, and they can get round really, really quickly. Uh, so they go down the different venues. Mm. Same Santa Paws. So, it's Fair the same course, yeah. it's the same Santa Paws. They get enough. round quickly, yeah. quicker. Yeah. Um, Magic, Dave. You should know well, that. Um, lots of people take their dogs to see. Okay. So no, I was just you know. building the fact with Loki yeah, that yeah. He's, you know, he's got a dressing gown. Well, yeah, got a, why wouldn't he, he have a dressing gown? He, he goes out, he gets wet, yeah. he comes home. And he has if you come gown. home and get wet, do you want to be dry? I don't put a dressing gown on, but yeah. yeah right. No, I'm just... I'm not having a... You're taking it yeah, personally. I, I, I am taking it personally. Why? I'm because just, because I'm there's a certain tone in around. your voice I'm, no, that suggests... No, no, no. That I'm, suggests... I'm in, you know that I'm impressed. You just dropped your son off in the middle of nowhere with some, some kid in a farm. <laughs> I mean, that's normally where people take the, tell people their kids they take the be, dogs. No, They've talked to the yeah, farm. Be, 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 be careful, it's getting really dark. Now. I'm building I'm building his life around, showing that he does okay. a lot of things, but he went to school. He did go to school, so, yeah. He used to go can, to school. 
Can I ask a question uh, back to Santa Paws again? Is that uh, because I now have an image and I wasn't aware yeah. of this concept? Yeah. Now, does do they do they make it, or rather, does Santa Paws look a little bit like Santa Claus in so much as it is a, essentially a white dog with a white beard? Uh, it could be any. It's a, you know, I mean, there's just it's just a it's a neutral coloured dog because obviously mm-hmm. it doesn't it's a, mm-hmm. and and it does have a beard. Fair play. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, fair play. Do you know what I mean? So fair play. Fair play. <laughs> fair play. There you go. You know what I mean? I'm just I, yeah. listen. <laughs> I didn't. I you know I didn't. I didn't. You know set this up. No, but, well, know, no. So go on. So this, you, this so, dog has come through the generations. So, fair play again. So Loki's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so Loki's gone. Loki's gone to school. Yeah. Like, why did he go to school? Is it a behaviour thing? Is it? Well, is it was that to make well, him. It was to educate him. Educate. Why do you send your children to school? <laughs> just asking. You it. know what I mean? This is. I'm I not feel playing like tennis. A, I feel with like you. this just. This feels like the north south divide. No, it doesn't. And I'm I am very much it. in the I'm north. You to educate people. Well, you, you, you take. You, you want your dogs to be clever, don't you? Okay. You want your dogs. So was to he be a good? Was he a good student? He was, but then he got expelled. <laughs> or why did he get expelled? Uh, I think the woman had just had enough of him. Basically, in terms of what? In terms of was just he always like, acting up? Was he playing? You know the goat. No, he, like or you the know, dog? You, yeah, playing the goat. He was just well, he was acting the dog. More like. <laughs> um, I think I think he just run his course, and maybe maybe we hadn't took the subtle hints of, of get he's out done. my fucking school. Um, he finished weeks ago. Take him. Yeah. No, we were there. I think we went for about four or five years. Mm. Uh, towards towards about I think the, towards the last. Four and a half years of those five, yeah. I bugger off to my mum and dad's because yeah, it was yeah. only around the corner, okay. and just leave me missing with, with them. Yeah. But he, he learnt loads, and, and he, he enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Come and mixing. also, it's a good way of mixing your dog with other dogs, mm. so they're not so nasty they and, and that, humans yeah. as well. So they get to meet other humans, and yeah. they're nice and friendly and stuff. And that's the best okay. way to do it. If you're gonna get a dog, mm. it's first of all taken to a puppy class so yeah, that yeah. they get used to dogs Love and all people this. and all this yeah, kind yeah. of stuff mm. and they're not angry and they don't turn up at your door in the middle of the night yeah. looking for looking ham, for ham. Yeah. and 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 that's that yeah. and the, that's how you get them to be um, nice and chill so how you? did the because I know we've, yeah. we haven't got long left but how did he get it how did the ex, the expulsion come about I think I think the I think he did something in? one night and um, the woman kicked off on him and he, it wasn't a technical expulsion it was more yeah. like it was more like did you appeal it I think we could have if we wanted to, but I just couldn't be asked going down there if he tasty anymore. So, mm, yeah. it, so it, 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 it was a natural conclusion yeah, for me. Say a natural mm. I think, I think, I think you know, it was it worked. It's it worked in my favour. Okay, because it meant that then I could go and play footy on a Thursday. Night. Was he all right with it? Oh, he, he was fine. I think, fine you know what though? I mean, you got to remember though. I mean, it is fine going well. You know, he's a dog and that, but. There was a lot of little dogs in that class that he'd uh, that he, known for five or six years. That's you know, a right rapport, a rapport, a rapport, a rapport track race. So, uh, it so, down, so, yeah. so, yeah. So, you know, you cannot, you know, we don't know what mm. the conc- you know, what the outcomes are. He might be really miserable and depressed now. Can I ask you this? Mates. Would yeah. Loki think yeah. that the dismissal was fair? Uh, I think he probably would have thought it was as it was as fair as yellow. <laughs> And maybe, okay. and maybe you know, maybe you know, VAR would have had a look for the second one, but okay. but you know, that's fine. Yeah. Nate, you know. Is he in terms of his character? Yeah. I mean, is he flamboyant or is he low key? Is that why he's called low key? <laughs> he is, is he sort of quite understated, very understated, quite very understated. I mean, he's understated yeah. to the point that you, you know, if he jumped on you, you'd you'd fall over. Well, Bass would fall over, but uh, yeah, he's strong. That's why yeah, he's a strong boy. He's strong. He's a strong boy. He is strong. Yeah. No, I think they just. He was starting to be intimidated by the strength of him and thought. I think he was just taking it. over. I think he was. They were worried he was going to start teaching the class because he'd been there that and long. That, that's not good. Though, he probably should have he, moved on to uni by then. Yeah, he should have been gone to university. He's the sort of dog that if he was to rub up against my door in the dark, it'd come through the would door, I, Dave. You know, and if he was hungry like the wolf. Would I be scared yeah, to be, open yeah. it? Your chain wouldn't have kept yeah, him out. Your door wouldn't have. Your door wouldn't have. Really he's strong. Just, he's just strong. But he's but go. he's not menacing. He's just no, strong. he's not menacing. He's just strong, but not menacing. He's like he's like you know George Clooney. Is he strong? He's str- I think he's strong and not menacing. He is not menacing, but yeah. Mm. But yeah, they, I mean, there you go. Loki Clooney. There you go. Yeah. Um, right, finally, Everton play Fulham away this weekend, Dave, and they are, with our ex-manager, Michael Silver, uh, they are doing very well at the moment, aren't they? A lot mm. better than... Sorry, I've, sorry. can I just stop oh. you? I've just yeah. been informed by Ned that he takes his lizards to Santa Claus. It's a bearded dragon. Ah, it's nonsense. What a load of nonsense. Yeah. 
Pipe down, Ned. Yeah, fair play. I, I do like I, I do like a Santa Claus pause clause pun though. But it's a good pun for Ned. Mm. It's a very good pun mm. for Ned. To be fair, really good. Mm, yeah. uh, so full on, Dave. What do you think? So fun. Um, I think. Hang on. Sorry, is my phone going? Go on. Hang on. All right, go on. Um, what do I think? I think the same as last time, in so much as it's all based on how we did on Saturday. Mm. And having got that foundation and, and having got to a situation where suddenly and finally things are starting to click, then I feel confident against Fulham. It's not going to be easy. No, no. I mean, you know, to use a cliche, there are no easy games. But I think that if we can try and play more consistently the way that we played on Saturday, I think that we shouldn't fear any of these games going forward. So I feel in a positive frame of mind ahead of Fulham. Um, and in fact, it, well, ahead of ahead of the remaining games before the break, mm. you know, there's not many scarily now before we're bloody off until Boxing Day. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Ped, the, the one thing they are doing, they're scoring goals, but they're conceding. They scored 22 and conceded 22 in their first. Yeah, the, they are. I think, I think if you want to use all the, the, the stats, they are one of the worst defensive teams. Mm. They're giving up chances in the Premier League. And it's going to be a tough game and we've not got a great record at no. Fulham over the years. It is going to be tough, and obviously Marco Silva will be his first opportunity, I think, to play against us, yeah, won't yeah. it? So it will be tough, and they they, they know they've got goals in them. And mm. I think sometimes that can you know you can score goals. I think obviously that gives you a confidence, and yeah. they've got Mitrovic, who's obviously a big he's threat this season. Him. He's doing mm. really, really well. And I think that confidence of, well, if you score, we can score. Mm. I think that, that, that will make it a very interesting game. And I think... We, we 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 can't take this game lightly at all because I think the the idea of just keeping them out the way we have been keeping teams out um, in tight games may not apply to this game. So uh, it, they've they've got you know different goal scorers as well. It's not just about Mitrovic. So mm. I think we're going to have to be a little bit more expansive than we would be normally playing away yeah. because I just don't think they they mind. They've got that. They've got that. Um, I don't know. Don't know. They've just got that confidence that yeah. Well, if you score, we'll score. Mm. So and because all the games have involved goals. I mean, it, you know, played Leeds at the weekend away, three a three two away at Leeds. Yeah. You know, that's that that kind of game. Um, you know, I think the first game of the season two two against Liverpool. If I think they beat uh, Brentford three two. They've had so many goals in their mm. games that mm. I don't think they'll be worried if we go ahead or no, or no. whatever. So I think we've got a. That it's going to be um, it's going to be a, a, a game that if we can get through it we could get the three points I think you know going into the last two games as Dave said all, on paper all three are uh, games that we can win but yeah. I, you know you've seen Leicester Leicester coming back into a bit of form and yeah, obviously yeah. Bournemouth haven't been <clears throat> as bad as everyone's no you know they they're not saying they're not written off they're still no. the top half of the table so mm. it'd be it'd be fantastic if we could get three points but it is going to be a, it is going to be a big game. Yeah, and Mark will have him fired up as well as well because he's got his own personal. Yeah, and why yeah. He'll, he'll he'll yeah absolutely he'll want to do well against Evan and he'll he'll have him fired up. So yeah, it's not going to be easy, but I don't I'm not fearful of it. Put it that way. No, I think we'll I think we'll have the opportunity to score a couple of goals and, and obviously they will. And I think sitting back and trying to defend against them might be dangerous because you invite too much pressure. Mm. You can concede, but we will have opportunities and and again. For us, it's just more of what we got on Saturday. But, but you know, let's see what happens. It'll be a tough game. Yeah. One we can win. Right, Dave, thank you very much. Again, I know mm. you're, you're busy. Off to do more stuff, but thank you. No, my pleasure as always. Enjoyed. The, anyway, I found it educational today. Very um, educational. It was, it was not just entertaining. No, it was no. educational. I learned stuff about Santa Paws. I, I learned other things about dog education, which I was unaware of. So, you know, listen, I get as much out of it as anybody. So thank you very much for having Dave, me. We all leave this podcast with more knowledge than we started. Wiser and, and, and now we know to carry a pack of ham around with us wherever exactly. we go. And a piece of wood. Always have your wood. That's what they say. Mm. Right. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>